Hi everyone, Jordan from Entech here. In a previous video, we looked at multi-single power injection as a method for providing power over long distance pixel runs. In today's video, we're gonna show you how you can size power supplies for this power injection method. As we demonstrated in a previous episode, multi-single power injection is a great way of running your pixel strips for long, spread out runs where zigzagging isn't an option. When choosing this power injection method, it's important to size your power supplies appropriately so they can handle the load while also considering costs. The process for sizing power supplies is very logical. First, let's start off with three seven meter runs of our 12 volt pixel tape. In this system, we have three power supplies. They need to be sized appropriately so they can provide enough power to run their respective section of tape, plus a little bit extra as a margin of safety. Let's take a look at the data sheet for this particular pixel strip. We can see that the total power consumption per meter when the tape is turned on and set to its maximum output is just under 20 watts per meter. It's generally a good idea to run through these calculations with the max output of the tape in mind, even though it may never be run at this intensity. This will ensure that you don't overload your power supplies if you decide to run an all white test pattern. If you intend for your lighting installation to run for a number of years, as time goes on, you may forget the assumptions that you made when you first designed the system. By sizing your power supplies to the max output of the tape, you'll be able to run the tape at any intensity in the future and you reduce the risk of overloading the tape in the future. All right, now back to the calculations. Each seven meter length of tape consumes 20 watts per meter at max output. So each power supply needs to be at least 140 watts in output. You always want to allow at least 10 to 20% extra capacity in the power supply so you don't have to run it at its maximum output just to be able to meet the power requirements of the tape. Running a power supply at very high capacity can lead it to heating up, which can reduce its lifespan significantly. To allow for 20% extra capacity with a 140 watt power requirement, we would need a power supply that can supply us 168 watts. Now, we're not likely gonna find a power supply that is exactly 168 watts, so we'll round up to the nearest available power supply, which is gonna be 180 or 200 watts. There's plenty of different brands and varieties of power supply on the market to choose from, but as long as we pick something that's 180 watts or more, we'll be fine. It's not often that we're gonna have projects that are gonna be one long line of pixels and nothing else. There's also gonna be other elements required for an installation. Let's see how multi-single power injections can be used to help us consolidate the power requirements for multiple strips of pixels. Let's consider an example where we have multiple parallel long distance runs. Each run might be about 21 meters long and let's say they're just one to two meters apart. You could simply duplicate what we had done with the first run like this. In this scenario, we have twice as many power supplies as what we probably need and this means twice as much cost. You can save money on your system by combining your power supplies like this. It's usually cheaper to buy fewer, larger power supplies rather than more, smaller units. To size these power supplies, we can use the same logical steps we applied earlier. Each power supply will be powering a total of 14 meters, split across two separate seven meter lengths. At approximately 20 watts per meter, we can calculate that each DC power supply needs to provide at least 280 watts. We'll apply a 10% margin, which means we have a power requirement of 308 watts. So we could choose a 320 or 350 watt driver for each power supply as these are commonly available outputs. And don't forget to calculate voltage drop. If you want to know a little bit more about that, you can check out previous videos where we've covered this topic. But that's all for today. Remember, like, share and subscribe if you found this video useful. Comment down below if you have any questions or if you think there's something that we missed. Don't forget to check out our social media pages and stay tuned for more helpful and tech tips.